Hey guys, Trevor Sullivan here. Just wanted to say thanks to everybody who is subscribed and everybody who likes my videos and leaves a comment to let me know what kind of feedback you have and what kind of future content you'd like to see on this channel. Your ongoing support, even though this channel is relatively small right now, really means a lot to me and helps continue to motivate me to produce more and more content. Uh, please head over to twitter.com slash pcgeek86 that is my username and give me a follow over there and also you can bookmark my homepage at trevorsullivan.net where i've been blogging for more than a decade on a variety of different tech topics anyways moving on to today's topic what we're going to be talking about today is a little bit different than the previous video that i did now the previous video i discussed how you can use Docker desktop to run more than one PowerShell container that are, is running two different versions of the PowerShell runtime or as many different versions as you have RAM to execute at the same time. But basically you can run different versions of PowerShell or Python or any other runtime in parallel and isolate their file systems so that they don't conflict with each other. So if you have a script that requires PowerShell version 6.0 and you have a different script that requires PowerShell version 7.1, the latest and greatest that just came out this past week, then you can certainly do that with Docker containers. However, in response to me producing this video on how to do that, another question came up, which was, hey, does this work for PowerShell version 5.0 or 5.1 for that matter? And the answer is not quite. So it works a little bit differently. So when you're running PowerShell version 5.0 or 5.1 or any version prior to 5.0, like 4, 3, two and one, those are all Windows exclusive versions of PowerShell. The only versions of PowerShell that can run on Linux or Mac or Windows natively as a cross-platform product is PowerShell Core version six and higher. So version six, version seven, both of those will run natively cross-platform. However, if you want to run PowerShell version 5 or 5.1 inside of a container, you still can do that. The only difference is that you are going to be working with Windows container technology running on top of Hyper-V instead of the Linux container technology that you are accustomed to with Docker Desktop. So what we're going to do now is just switch over to Firefox here and really wanted to point you over to the Microsoft documentation for Windows containers because they direct you to install Hyper-V. Of course, you have to be on Windows 10 Professional or Enterprise or on Windows Server that has supported containers as well. Uh, but in this case, we're looking at specifically Windows 10. And you also need to make sure that you enable the Hyper-V feature. Now, one way that you can do that is to head over to appwiz.cpl and hit turn windows features on and off and just make sure that little box with hyper-v is checked if you want to do this in an automated fashion if you're maybe automating setting up development systems that you can easily build in an automated fashion then of course we are going to want to use powershell for that purpose and so what you can do is you can use the enable windows optional feature command to enable hyper-v as well as the containers feature so if i run that you'll see I've already got the containers feature enabled. And if you want to just verify, you can do get windows optional feature. There it is dash online and basically just list out all of the features that you currently have installed on windows. So down here, I've got containers enabled and up here you can see I've got Microsoft hyper V enabled as well. So my system is good to go to run containers. Now, just because you have Hyper-V and the containers feature installed doesn't necessarily mean that you are finished. The other thing that you'll need to do is to download and install Docker because Docker is how we interact with containers to run new containers, to stop containers, delete containers, download container images and all that. So what you want to do is head over to docker.com slash product slash Docker desktop and download and install Docker desktop on your system. And once you've got that installed, you'll have a little icon down in the system tray here that says Docker Desktop is running. Now, what you can do is click on that little Docker Desktop icon and actually right click on it 
And there should be a context menu option that says either switch to Linux containers, or if you currently have Linux containers enabled, it'll say switch to Windows containers. And what that'll basically do is it will change the Docker CLI that you run inside of your PowerShell session to communicate with the Docker daemon on Windows instead of the Docker daemon that's running either in Windows subsystem for Linux or on that Hyper-V virtual machine called, um, I think they call it Mo Mobi VM or they might have renamed it to Docker Desktop VM. I don't exactly remember, but uh, de depending on what type of integration you're using, they do support either WSL or actual Hyper-V integration where you can actually see a Hyper-V VM running behind the scenes. So um, I'm currently in the Windows container mode. And as you can see, when I popped open the Docker desktop UI here, it actually is showing me that I'm running a container on the Windows operating system. Now, when you're running containers on Windows, it's different than Linux containers. It's a different container image format. And so Windows container images are only compatible with Windows container runtimes, whereas Linux container images are compatible with Linux container runtimes. So just keep that in mind. And if you just do a quick Google search for Docker Hub Windows Server, you can find the Windows Server core images. And so I've got that loaded up right here. Now, one of the things to keep in mind is that if you're running Docker on Linux, you're probably accustomed to doing like Docker pull Nginx or Docker pull, you know, Microsoft slash PowerShell or something like that. Well, on Windows, it's a little bit different because the Windows container images are actually hosted on the Microsoft registry at mcr.microsoft.com. So make sure that you are prefixing your container images with the proper registry name so that you can download those Windows container images. So uh, with that in mind, there's a couple of kind of featured tags here. There's a more full tag list down below, but Microsoft doesn't publish a latest tag. So if you're accustomed to like doing Docker pull uh, Nginx, for example, the implied tag at the end is just latest, right? So if there's a latest tag, then that is the one that you'll get, or you can specify a named tag. And in the case of the Microsoft Windows Server images, you actually have to specify a named tag because the latest image is not supported. So if I was to try to do uh, docker pull mcr.microsoft.com slash windows slash server core, uh, let's see what would happen if we tried to do that. Uh, let's do docker pull. And see the manifest tagged by latest is not found. So basically you can't use the latest tag. You have to either specify, you can use the long-term support version of Windows Server, or you can use the semi-annual channel or SAC version of Windows Server images. So this is uh, 2020 H2, uh, have to. So this is the latest one, but if you want the long-term support version, you can use the LTSC. Uh, one other thing that I would point out as well is that if you are on a 64-bit x86 architecture like I am right now, I'm on a Ryzen CPU, so uh, basically you'll want to find the tag for the AMD64 version. So if you were to try to do a Docker pull on the, I believe it's the 20H2. So let me just type that in here. You'll get a different message saying that there's no matching manifest for Windows AMD64 in this particular image. So basically we need to specify a slightly different image tag, which is 20H2. AMD 64. However, I am running a slightly earlier version of Windows. I believe this container image is only compatible with the Insiders version of Windows right now because I'm on Windows version 2004. And so if I were to try to grab the 20H2-AMD64 image, I would get yet another error message saying that the 19042 based image is incompatible with a 19041 host. So you have to kind of keep in mind what version of Windows am I running? Of course, you can use the winver command to find that out. I'm on Windows version 2004 right here. And so I would need to use a, an appropriate version of the Windows base image. So there is thankfully a 2004-AMD64 tag here that you can use as well. So let's go ahead and just try that one. And sure enough, it looks like this one is actually going to work. It's, it's not giving me any errors here. So as you can see, I actually already have a different PowerShell terminal here that's currently working on downloading that version. 
However, if I do a Docker image LS, you can see that I already do have a Windows container image downloaded, or a, a base image rather, that I can use to then build off of. And this is the long-term servicing support version for Windows Server 2019, basically. So now what I can do is to do Docker run. I'll use dash dash RM just to delete the container automatically after it's finished being used. Then I'll do dash dash interactive dash dash TTY just to make sure that it is interactive, that I can interact with the terminal. And then we're going to specify this image, mcr.microsoft.com slash windows slash server core. And then we'll use the LTSC 2019. So now I have a CMD EXE prompt. This is not a PowerShell prompt that you get by default. So what you can actually do is just call PowerShell, which is the binary name for Windows PowerShell version 5.1, and that will get you into a PowerShell prompt right here. Now to verify that you're actually running a Windows version of PowerShell, you can do $PS version table. And sure enough, you can see that this is the desktop edition. Now, it's desktop versus core. It's not desktop versus server edition. The desktop version of PowerShell is actually the Windows client and Windows server version of PowerShell. So don't think that desktop means that it's a, a desktop version. We are actually running a Windows Server 2019 base image here. Um, and one other thing I would point out as well is that if you want to run PowerShell core, like PowerShell version 6 or PowerShell version 7, on a Windows Server container image, you certainly can do that as well. You can actually go out to uh, github.com slash PowerShell slash PowerShell. You can head over to the releases section and you can download the zip file for the appropriate version of PowerShell. So in this case, I would want like 64-bit Windows. And so I could download this and basically just extract it inside of this container. And then I can run PowerShell version 5.1 on Windows containers. And I can also run PowerShell version 7.1 on Windows containers as well. So just keep that in mind that Windows container technology is different from Linux container technology, but it does allow you to run PowerShell or pretty much any other Windows compatible software all the same. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like if you learned something new and feel free to leave a comment and let me know what you thought of this video and i will see you next time cheers